to the lesson on role of oxygen in dioxygen uptake and transport in biological system part of inorganic chemistry under this our objective is to understand the role of iron in transport and binding of dioxygen in biological system and the mechanism involved in this the learning outcomes are what is hemoglobin what is myoglobin what is the role of iron in hemoglobin chemistry of iron in oxygen transport what is color of why the color of blood is red what is heal equation what is bore effect all these we are going to understand by the end of this uh, lesson oxygen is used to provide energy for all the tissues and organs of the body even when the body is at rest this oxygen is carried in blood from lungs to the tissues where it is consumed and uh, nature has designed beautifully a sophisticated mechanism for this uh, storage and transport of oxygen in our body two metal proteins hemoglobin and bioglobin myoglobin are responsible for oxygen uptake and transport in our biological system we will understand in detail about hemoglobin and myoglobin although our interest is not much on biology but more on chemistry particularly the chemistry of iron so hemoglobin the major component of red blood cells it transports oxygen from lungs to tissues it also carries carbon dioxide back to the lungs it is a globular protein and it is uh, it consists of four subunits each protein subunit is an individual molecule that joins to its neighboring subunits through intermolecular interactions let us see its structure you can see this molecular model of hemoglobin where the proteins are being displayed in form of ribbon you know there are four colors you can see of uh, ribbons that uh, represents globin protein blue red and purple and green these are proteins these are globin proteins and you can see this uh, embedded uh, heme units here four heme units represented by four arrows so these four heme units and uh, these globins they comprise of hemoglobin molecule let us understand what is heme and what is hemoglobin heme is the active site where uptake and release of oxygen takes place it is a porphyrin complex of iron plus 2 the porphyrin is a natural chelating agent and it is a macrocycle consisting of four pyrrole rings with conjugated double bonds and they form a cavity and in that cavity four nitrogen atoms are there they bind to iron 2 plus and look at the octahedral coordination sites of iron 2 four apical four equatorial positions are being bonded to nitrogen and the remaining two apical positions the down one we can say fifth position is being bonded to nitrogen atom of imidazole ring of histidine residue which is bonded to globin part and the sixth coordination site is remaining available for dioxygen molecule to bind so this is how all the six uh, coordination sites of iron 2 are completed and each hemoglobin molecule has four heme groups bound to four proteins that we have seen in previous slide as well look at this uh, slide here we have represented uh, hemoglobin you know you look at this chem draw structure keep apart this dioxygen molecule uh, colored in purple color apart from this and this uh, histidine this is called the remaining structure is called porphyrin and this iron 2 is bonded to this nitrogen atoms four nitrogen atoms of porphyrin ring and uh, here are the four pyrrole rings 1 2 3 4 having conjugated double bonds and this fifth position is bonded fifth position of uh, coordination position of iron 2 is bonded to nitrogen of histidine molecule and this histidine is being connected to 
globin protein and the sixth position is available for dioxin molecule to bind the same we have just represented in form of a cartoon this is what the globin protein it is connected to him through histidine ring and this uh, you know circle represents porphyrin plane where iron atom is uh, located at the um, center of the porphyrin plane and the sixth position is available for dioxin molecule to bind so this is how the structural detail of hemoglobin and we have understood what what is heme next is what is globin globin is a protein this protein is surrounding your heme unit this is you can say it is providing a protective cover to the heme unit we will understand the chemistry of this protection cover in uh, later slides so each hemoglobin molecule is made up of four globin protein subunits two are of alpha form and two are of beta form that is why hemoglobin can be represented as alpha 2 beta 2 and this alpha and beta forms can be distinguished by their different amino acid sequences each hemoglobin molecule contains 141 alpha residues and 146 beta residues now we have seen what is heme what is globin now let us see how they are acting together so in order to understand their role how they are acting together and uh, making hemoglobin responsible for carrying and uptake and release of oxygen molecule in our biological system let us understand in this way can this heme act without globin i mean if globin let us say globin is not there can heme perform its role as an oxygen carrier answer is no the reversible binding of oxygen is possible only when protein or globin unit is present around the heme unit that is why they have they have to be there together they cannot perform their role individually so let us imagine what is let us understand the chemistry what is happening heme without globin so naked heme without globin part a component what happens it gets oxidized reversibly when bound to oxygen molecule dioxygen molecule and it forms hematin hematin is a form which cannot carry oxygen simply the oxygen carries oxygen transport will be stopped so that is what the danger so uh, under, try to understand the beauty of this nature nature has designed such a sophisticated mechanism where without globin it cannot perform the role and if pro protein is not there this iron is going to be oxidized to iron 3 plus and it is going to form a hematin which is a mu oxo dimer what is happening and this this globin protein is preventing iron 2 plus from oxidation or from formation of mu oxo dimer look at what is happening this porphyrin iron when it it comes in contact with dioxin molecule understand we are talking about porphyrin iron which is not accompanied by globin protein we are talking only about heme so heme when in comes in contact with dioxin molecule it forms a this kind of uh, oxygenated form and further another uh, heme unit reacts with this to form a mu peroxo dimer where iron 2 plus is being oxidized to iron 3 plus and further it gets converted to ferrile complex where iron gets oxidized to iron 4 plus and this ferrile when it com comes in contact with uh, another heme unit it forms hematin a mu oxo dimer which is the danger it cannot carry oxygen understand if hemoglobin cannot carry oxygen then the purpose is uh, no more uh, uh, remaining so we need to prevent this oxidation uh, who is preventing globin is preventing so this is what the importance of globin with heme we have understood about hemoglobin now let us talk about myoglobin see myoglobin is not at all different simply the difference is hemoglobin is a monomer myoglobin is a uh, hemoglobin is a tetramer myoglobin is a monomer it is a metalloprotein it is unlike hemoglobin hemoglobin is responsible for oxygen 
transport oxygen carries acts as an oxygen carrier but hemoglobin myoglobin acts as an oxygen st storage so and uh, this uh, structurally myoglobin is a monomer analog of hemoglobin so it contains only one heme single subunit of heme you know. hemoglobin picks up oxygen from lungs transport it and delivers it to the tissues where it is stored by myoglobin the structurally as i have said it is simply a monomer you look at this ribbon pattern of this this is a molecular uh, model of myoglobin where the protein is being represented in form of ribbon this this color this ribbon and here is the embedded heme unit and this heme we have seen this is the structure of heme and where iron is at the center and oxygen and sixth position and nitrogen and of histidine at fifth position so simply it is a monomer monomeric analog of hemoglobin let us understand the distinction between two hemoglobin is a protein of molecular weight 64500 daltons myoglobin is a protein of molecular weight 17800 daltons i have said it, it is a tetramer comprising of four heme subunits myoglobin is a monomer it contains only one heme group or heme unit this can be represented in form of alpha 2 and beta 2 myoglobin being a monomer it can only be represented in form of alpha and number of alpha residues in hemoglobin are 141 beta residues are this is beta beta residues are 146 and in myoglobin 153 only alpha residues are there and hemoglobin transports oxygen myoglobin stores oxygen so this is what the broadly you can distinguish between hemoglobin and myoglobin now next very important and very interesting question before us is how does or why the color of blood looks red what is responsible for this the simple answer i can say without understanding much biology we can say it is the oxygenated form of hemoglobin that makes the blood red in color so we'll understand how this hemoglobin is carrying oxygen so this is what how hemoglobin the protein in broad uh, red blood cells bind to oxygen that's what we are going to understand now so the chemistry between iron and oxygen in hemoglobin there are two theories of course many pro, you know reports are available but two major reports i will cite here one is by joseph weiss who suggested who tried to provide an report on nature of iron oxygen bond in oxyhemoglobin he suggested in oxygenated form of hemoglobin when iron binds to dioxygen molecule it gets oxidized to iron 3 plus remember this is what the theory or the report being suggested by joseph weiss another report is given by max perutz which who says in oxygenated form of hemoglobin once iron 2 binds to oxygen dioxygen molecule iron 2 doesn't get oxidized it remains in plus 2 form only change takes place is change in spins of iron 2 so two theories one is joseph weiss is saying change in oxidation state of iron max perutz is saying no change in oxidation state of iron but change in only spin states of iron plus 2 atom in hemoglobin let us understand this in de more detail we will only talk about perutz mechanism at this moment so oxygen binding how iron binds to hemoglobin binds to oxygen or you can say iron being the central atom metal atom how this iron to bind to dioxygen molecule that is what we are going to study based on perutz mechanism which suggests the binding in hemoglobin oxygen iron oxygen binding in hemoglobin depends on the electronic spin transition of the iron atom not the change in oxidation state of iron atom 
so this is what is perus mechanism let us understand here how the electronic spin transition is taking place in iron plus 2 there are two forms i have written in green form this is oxygenated form this is called relaxed form see when hemoglobin is oxygenated it is relaxed when hemoglobin is not oxygenated it is called deoxygenated form it is called tense form hemoglobin hemoglobin is in tense form so you can say t form and r form so what is happening in oxidized oxygenated form hemoglobin oxygenated hemoglobin iron is in 2 plus plus 2 oxidation state the electronic configuration is 3d6 and all the electrons are in t2g6 and it is in low spin state in deoxygenated form electronic configuration is t2g4 and eg2 and because of this this is in high spin state so there is a change in spin is taking place when it is in oxygenated form and in not in oxygenated form oxygenated form it is diamagnetic deoxygenated form it is paramagnetic one more very in interesting and important point which is playing a significant role in oxygenation of uh, hemoglobin it is the radius of iron 2 all the six electrons being located in t2g6 t2g orbitals the radius of iron is only 75 picometer and in deoxygenated form electrons being occupied in t2g4 and eg2 the radius of iron is little bit bigger that is 92 picometer see the difference 70 to 75 picometer in oxygenated form 92 picometer in deoxygenated form this is very important because of small radius in oxygenated form because of small radius of iron 2 it fits into the periphery plane however in deoxygenated form iron radius of iron 2 being higher that is of 92 picometer it doesn't fit it cannot fit inside the periphery plane that is why it remain above the periphery plane and that the distance of from periphery plane is 42 picometer and this is what the distinction between oxygenated form and deoxygenated form of hemoglobin spin transition i have already said what i have uh, said in the previous one what is it says uh, you know this this iron 2 remains above the plane of periphery when it is not in not bound to oxygen when it bound to oxygen when the iron 2 is bonded to oxygen it it remains in low spin state and radius of iron 2 becomes smaller and it goes inside the plane of periphery ring otherwise it, it remains above the plane when deoxygenated form it, it remains above the plane when in oxygenated form it goes inside the plane so this is how it's happening because of change in spin of electrons in iron 2 atoms let us understand this picture in deoxygenated form this look at this heme plane this is what the nitrogen bonded to iron so iron nitrogen bond you see it is uh, heme is getting domed it's no more planar it is domed iron atom is not fitting inside the periphery plane it is remaining above the periphery plane and look at the right side oxygenated form the heme is in planar form the this this look at this uh, bond iron nitrogen bond is in planar form and iron atom being in low spin state its radius is smaller it fits in, into the periphery plane and look at the, it is oxygenated it is bound to oxygen dioxygen molecule so this is what perus mechanism suggests it only says there is a change in spin state of iron 2 plus next question is because of this change in spin state iron atom goes in comes out goes in comes out because of this what is happening there is a conformational change in protein in whole hemoglobin experiences a conformational change structural change and because of this structural change the tendency or affinity of hemoglobin to carry oxygen increases what i am saying hemoglobin comprises of four subunits of heme 
we are talking about one subunit of him when one subunit of him binds to oxygen oxygen atom comes down because of change in spin when it is bound to oxygen low spin state smaller radius it fits inside the perforin plane because of this movement oxygenated to deoxygenated because of this movement of perforin ring and iron atom there is a conformational change takes place in the heme subunit and one heme subunit being connected to other subunits this conformational change gets induced to other subunits as well and because of this there is an affinity of hemoglobin to bind to dioxygen molecule increases this is called cooperative binding due to heme heme interaction so we'll understand this this is very important phenomena which we do not find in case of myoglobin which being a monomer there are no subunits available in myoglobin hemoglobin having four subunits there is cooperative binding to to say in simple language when one subunit of heme binds to dioxygen molecule that change changes the conformation of protein and that change in conformation gets induced transferred to other subunits as a consequence other subunits affinity to binding to dioxygen molecule increases further look at this stability constant the first hemoglobin subunit heme unit binds to oxygen first molecule of oxygen binds to hemoglobin the stability constant is in the range of 5 to 60 look at the fourth one the stability constant k4 is in the range of 3000 to 6000 so that is why there is a significant increase in oxygen binding so the affinity to bind to dioxygen increases and this is happening because of cooperative binding or cooperativity this effect is called cooperativity and what is the sole reason behind this cooperativity because of this change in spin spin of iron 2 because of which there is a movement in iron atom inside the perforin ring when oxygenated outside the perforin ring when deoxygenated because of this movement there is a conformational change and because of this conformational change the affinity to bind to dioxygen molecule increases look at this curve we are just comparing myoglobin oxygen saturation percentage of oxygen and hemoglobin curve look at this curve if you look at if you mark this 50% you know if you look at here this 50% in hemoglobin curve suggests hemoglobin has a lower affinity for oxygen than myoglobin this hemoglobin curve oxygen saturation curve is sigmoidal in shape and my, myoglobin it is hyperbolic in nature the sigmoidal form of hemoglobin suggests the cooperative effect or cooperative binding in case of hemoglobin which is absent in case of myoglobin there is a hills equation simply what is this equation see this oxygen binding by hemoglobin oxygenation of myoglobin this can be represented in form of equilibrium constant k equal to this one and theta which is a ratio of the concentration of myoglobin present as mbo2 bound to oxygen and to the total concentration of myoglobin what is it sir theta equal to myoglobin bound to oxygen upon total myoglobin as myoglobin pre myoglobin plus bound myoglobin so this is theta and this can be expressed in this form theta equal to ko2 1 plus ko2 for myoglobin this equation is uh, valid you know but for hemoglobin having tetramer this equation is no more valid that is why ab hill he suggested an equation considering taking the cooperative binding or cooperativity into account 
so he suggested this theta upon 1 minus theta for hemoglobin theta upon 1 minus theta equal to k o2 up to the power n where n equal to 3 and this value of n which is called hill constant n is hill constant and k is uh, dissociation association constant and when k n is greater than 1 that suggests positive cooperativity this n greater than 1 indicates there is cooperative interaction between him subunits him him interaction leads to cooperativity and that is being uh, reflected here in form of n greater than 1 this suggests the addition of oxygen to one subunit of hemoglobin affects the oxygen affinities of other subunits and uh, another concern here transport of besides transport and storage of oxygen there is transport of hydro H plus and carbon dioxide also being done by hemoglobin so hemoglobin binds one H plus for every oxygen molecule released at tissues carbon dioxide available at tissues combines with H plus to form hydrogen HCO3 minus bicarbonate ion and that again being transported to lungs so the binding of H plus and CO2 to hemoglobin decreases the affinity of hemoglobin for oxygen. So what happens? H plus and CO2 are there in tissues, available in tissues. What hemoglobin does? Hemoglobin carries oxygen from lungs to tissues. Near tissues, since H plus are ions are there, so acidity is lesser, uh, sorry pH value is smaller, pH is in acidic range. In smaller pH, in small pH, look at this graph. Oxygen saturation versus uh, this oxygen partial pressure at, with respect to pH. At smaller pH, oxygen binding is lesser. So that means in, in muscles, pH being lesser, since H plus are present in, H plus and CO2 are present in muscles, pH is smaller. When pH is smaller, oxygen binding affinity of hemoglobin is lesser as a result what will happen oxygen will be released there see the beauty of uh, biological system how it is arranged oxygen is being carried from lungs to tissues automatically it is you know the, it is favoring H plus being available in muscles this release of oxygen by hemoglobin in muscles is being favored by low pH so this is what being studied by Bohr, which Christian Bohr, which father of Niels Bohr, and this is called Bohr effect. To summarize, I can say, oxygen is released more readily at lower pH. In muscles, pH is lesser because of availability of H plus and CO2. Hi uh, hemoglobin easily releases oxygen in muscles and carries away carbon dioxide in form of bicarbonate and give it to transfer it to lungs. So this is called Bohr's effect. Just to understand in working muscles what happens, just to correlate when do when we do exercise or the body's uh, you know when we do exercise the body's oxygen needs increases dramatically and uh, what happens it produces more H plus and carbon dioxide in uh, you know via aerobic metabolism and uh, since more H plus is being produced in muscles this will demand more oxygen release this will facilitate more oxygen release by hemoglobin in muscles and that will that will lead to more efficient release of oxygen by hemoglobin and this is what uh, is favorable for oxygen transport in biological system. Thank you very much for your attention. This is all what I said about chemistry of iron that is responsible for oxygen transport and storage in biological system. If you have liked it, please share with those who need it in case of 
any comment or any query please feel free to write me on my youtube youtube uh, link you can write me on my email id also you can reach me on my twitter handle thank you very much